you, you test bodily organs. Maybe musical organs? Could be musical organs. I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna say split testing organs. That sounds more visceral, that's okay. Um, Anne Nguyen is gonna talk to us about A-B testing for organs. Let your imaginations run wild. Please welcome Anne. Well, I am thrilled to go last after two ladies and all the men. <laughs> In all seriousness, my, my name is Ann Wynn, and I am a proud registered organ donor. I am, yeah, I am the design whaler at Whole Whale, and we work with Donate Life America, the largest organ donation network in the country. And our work is so important because we've got one issue in this country, just one. Uh, even though 95% of Americans agree that organ donation is a great thing, only 54% are registered. That's a big gap. Well, and the problem is 95% of organ donation registration happens at the DMV, not the most pleasant place to be, in my opinion. Um, and unlike EU countries, the, the system in our country is opt-in versus opt-out. So we don't have a lot of control over changing the policies. That ship has sailed, but what we can do is focus on what we have more control over, which is the online registration at registerme.org. Uh, what is at stake? There are currently 115,000 people waiting in line for a life-saving transplant. That's, that's a lot of lives on the line. And but there's hope, there's hope. One donor, Alistair, one donor can save up to eight <laughs> lives. And with so much at stake, what we're doing is turning to, to A-B testing to increase that one extra organ donor. What is A-B testing? It is essentially comparing two versions of something to see which performs better. Our dog, Turtle, our office dog, she knows this. She's wearing a red hat and a purple hat to see which one gets her more treats. This is a smart one. She's a smart puppy. And why, why are we A-B testing? Uh, Alistair, just this between you and me, don't tell anyone, but when I re recommend a design option, it's my best guess, even though it's pretty damn good, it's a, it's a guess. So we need to challenge my assumptions and all design assumptions. So on A, you've got this uh, disclaimer above the form, and then in B, we moved it below the form. So think to yourself for one second, which do you think did, did better? Is it A or is it B? B. B. Oh, well, there's participation. I love that. Well, you are right. You are right. Uh, B did better by 4.3%, which is really modest. Small victory over there, yes. But this also only took us two minutes to run. And then we didn't stop here. We ran another test. Uh, in our original, we were like, well, donors need to know what their impact is. So we had this fun graphic to make the donation process less boring. Uh, and then, you know, we just thought, let's test against this. Let's rip this, this stat off and see what happens. A or B, what do you think? A. A? B. All right. Ah, oh, it's B again. Uh, by removing the form, we, we were over-designing. We were cluttering this form, and by removing, we saw a 2.3% improvement, which is also pretty modest. But wait till you see this next test. Just wait for it. Uh, in the original design, we had two calls to action on our page template to get someone to the registration page, but the client was like, this is, Anne, why are you asking twice? Once is enough. So we were like, fine, we'll launch with B under the condition that we'll A-B test after launch. And boy, are we glad we did, because our original design with the two calls to action did better by 38%. So this is two digits. Uh, this is a lot of lives that are potentially saved by the, the people who, that are registering. Um, and these, these improvements are not accidental. We came into these tests with hypothesis. Without one, you would be like turtle. She's chasing my darling turtle, chasing a tail she doesn't have. Uh, and on the website, there are hundreds of elements that we could test, but the thing that we did not lose sight of was motivation, ability, and trigger. And these are the three elements in the behavioral model uh, from a, a professor named B.J. Fogg from Stanford. So in a second, you're going to see this activation threshold where we want users to cross. The blue, darker blue is where you want to be. Uh, in a place you're asking someone to do something that has high motivation and high ability. So let's, let's rewind and take a look at why some of our tests work and why it didn't. Uh, with, with motivation, we were trying way too hard. K-I-S-S, keep it simple, smarties. Uh, people who came to this page already cared. We didn't have to influence them, even though, although Influence is a fantastic book by Cialdini. Uh, and then let's, let's revisit ability. We ran tests that 
give users the perception of ease. Uh, this form by the DMV, I don't think uh, accomplishes that. DMV form fail. Uh, and then lastly, trigger, the last element of, of this behavioral framework. We asked politely, we asked at the right time, at the right place. So you ask more, you get more. And this helps people cross the activation threshold. Uh, we were able to use A-B test to increase the number of organ donors. And this is a matter of life and death. So next time when you are in doubt, turn to A-B test. Don't go with your guts. Your guts are better off for donations. So go to registerme.org. Thank you. I'm Ann. I'll see you at the bar. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen.